In the following presentation, engineer Conrad Wong, vice chairman of Yao Li Holdings Limited, shares his idea of turning green to gold. He introduces some of the environmental technologies that are adopted in his construction projects and explains how these technologies can lower energy costs as well as create numerous business opportunities. Today I'm going to talk about uh, my uh, company. We define ourselves as a green integrated corporation and my title is, is talk about from green to gold. Uh, basically I, I want to cover a lot of aspect um, in green and how we turn green into business opportunity. Now I want to um, share with you basically there's four levels of green thinking uh, from a business uh, point of view. Um, the first, first level is that green is, is a nuisance. Basically the, the owner just want to not want to have green. So basically they have a mentality that uh, catch me if you can. So basically I'm going to do anything. The second thinking is green is a cost, basically the minimum compliance. Okay? So they would not do anything extra than the law. I have met some developers in Hong Kong, they always say, if you want me to do green, change the law. Otherwise, I will not do it. So there are still a lot of people have this mentality. Now, the third level is a little bit better. Nowadays, um, CSR is a major consideration. And uh, some company want to become good corporate citizens. So they will think green is part of the responsibility, which is not bad. But my thinking is green is gold. Green is a business opportunity. We can turn green into a huge profit. And I also is a firm believer that Doing good means doing well. So you do good for society, good, do good for the environment, it will generate profit for your company. Now, a little story, personal story of mine. I have uh, three children. Uh, my daughter, the eldest one now, is close to 24. But back in about 20 years ago, in 1997, I came back home from work one day when she was still in kindergarten. And she was bursting into tears and you know, hold me and really crying like mad. And then I said, what happened, Esther? And she said, no, Daddy, my, my teacher told me that the tropical rainforest is dying because all human beings were cutting down trees to build houses. Now at that time, so they knew that I'm a building contractor, so I build buildings for a living. So in her little mind, Daddy, me, is the murderer of the rainforest. So in order to calm her down and say, don't worry, uh, my dear, one day I'm going to build a building without using any trees. Now, as a parent, I, I take that um, promise uh, very seriously. And at the same time, the Hong Kong labor cost was escalating. And then our, our company is investing a lot in prefabrications. Now, if you look at the picture on the left, it's a typical construction project, so uh, lots of timber. And uh, usually people will call this uh, dangerous, uh, demanding, and quite dirty. Now, our company do not think that is necessary. So we start investing a lot of technology into what we call modular constructions, basically using prefabrication, especially prefabrication concrete. So we, um, we did a lot of um, the investment um, through time. We tried to build a building in, in a modular basis. It's like um, paying Legos, okay? except my Legos is weighed about four or five tons each. But all our assembly in China ship it to Hong Kong and then assembly on site. We estimated that every three block project can save around 2,500 trees. And so we have many, many projects uh, completed for the last 20 years. So we estimate that we save around something like 75,000 trees in the past 20 years. And not only that, after 1997, we started manufacturing all this Picasso in China because it lowered the cost. So we established our first factory in China in 1998, and then we bought a piece of land in Weizhou. So we shifted all from Shenzhen operation to my Weizhou operations. And the Weizhou operation now uh, is exceeding 180,000 square meters. So we have lots of production in Weizhou. This is just a typical concrete facade. This is the, the volumetric Picasso, like the bathroom units. And because if you really good at make a good um, concrete facade, um, then it's very important that the mold itself is in good quality. And we could not find a good enough mold supplier in China, so we, we decided we want to do our own mold manufacturing. So we also opened up 
eight uh, mold manufacturing facilities to produce our own mold. And with that, now we're producing something else, like stainless steel products, GMS product, GMS mean galvanized mild steel product. So all these are actually produced in the factory and then transported to Hong Kong. And then also we produce something like called a GLC, GLG, which is glass reinforced gypsum. If you've ever been to Disneyland, all the external wood structure you look like, look there, is actually not wood, not timber. They are actually glass reinforced gypsum because it's much lightweight and much more easy to handle. And a lot of hotels in Macau, like the Venetian, they use a lot of this type of product. So next time you go to Macau and see all this, uh, I can assure you they look like bronze, they look like metal, but in fact they're not. They're basically gypsum-based product. And our company produces a lot of those. I'm also to produce aluminum windows, curtain wall. So all these manufacturing facilities. They sprack off from a very simple idea from my daughter. Last year, we turned over around close to $600 million. From um, 1997, I started from a small company. Now we turn it to 2018, a very substantial company. Our current contract on hands is close to $1.5 billion. So of course of advice, uh, listen to your children. Sometimes it can be a very profitable business. Um, not only that, um, recently the Beijing government has announced that they want to do prefabrication. Uh, President Xi, uh, he wants to move the entire China in a much more environmental friendly country. Uh, so they actually have a very important document to publish last year to talk about they want to use all the prefabrication technology in the construction industry. Uh, so we have this um, 20 years of experience and we have many technology that we developed and nowadays we are this technology in great demand. So we are about to probably open another 40 factories in China in the next three years' time. So basically, we are one of the very rare Hong Kong-based companies that we can develop our own technology, and later on, we can turn this technology into a not only profitable business, now we are exporting this technology in the different parts of China. So in, in a sense, we are transforming the Chinese construction market. Now, that's a very quick overview on what we do in a factory. Basically, when we manufacture particular components, we have to do the form work first, and then put the steel reinforcement inside to give the tension strength, and then we pull the concrete. And then we actually will nowadays embed a RFID chip into the concrete element. So we can track this component right from the beginning from my productions to my delivery onto the site. And nowadays, all these concrete productions have fully automated computer control, so my computer is actually uh, doing all this weighting and then mixing before we put the concrete and ensure the quality. And then my supervisor is actually using a smartphone. Uh, this is actually downloaded from his smartphone screen. He's using this to check all this quality and the components in the Picasso elements. As you can see here, every single step from the steel reinforcement fixing finished and then checking and then cast the concrete, produce all the marking there and put it onto the truck. It's been tracked by, by RFID system. Quite comprehensive. And, and at the same time, hoisting all these Picasso elements are very crucial because every, every one of them weighs very heavily. So we always have a lot of safety precautions. So not only the main chain that, that we have to be ensured are currently fixed, but also we have a special backup sling so that in case some reason that the train breaks, and then they did stack up a sling with steel holding facade. And we have tailor-made of special devices like this one here in order to anchor the, the facade. When we go on site, we have to plan this in great details. Nowadays, we're using what we call BIM, Building Information Modeling, which basically all the constructions elements, including the tower crane, the actual work, the, the final product, facade element, and so on, are all designed it in the computer. And then assemble it on the computer once before we actually go out to the site and do the actual installations. And all this has to be very carefully planted. All this circle you see here are the tile crane circle. How much you can lift for a particular distance away from the jeep. So you can see that this is the facade location, the bathroom locations, all are marked here. So the, the truck driver, when they loaded the, the facade, they have to load it into exact positions. Otherwise, they may endanger 
my tile queen operation. Uh, so this is a typical housing project now that we have all these uh, staircases, slabs, beams and uh, facade. Uh, this is how they handle this. So this is lifting from the truck onto the storage area and then lift it up to the working floor. And then the worker will use the tile crane to lift the semi pika slab while load it down one by one and then we fix the reinforcement and conduit in order to complete one floor. Now I'm going a little bit um, off tangent and talk a little bit about our E&M business, an electrical and mechanical business. Now we purchased a company called Royden, an electrical company in the year 2008. Basically Royden is one of the largest electrical and mechanical contractors in Hong Kong. We purchased the company because we wanted to make this our company as vertical integrated as we possibly can. Now, but the firm, one of the things that I, when I took over the company, I immediately asked them to expand our environmental engineering department because I'm very conscious that uh, green is the way to go. Um, there are a lot of environmental um, project uh, opportunities uh, ahead of us. So I enlarged that department. So we're building more and more uh, for the drainage department, the environmental protection department, such as the uh, stormwater pumping station, this automatic refuel collection system, and the, one of the first PV folding panel in Hong Kong. This is in the Sepik Reservoir in Hong Kong. And now this department, again, is around over 400 million uh, Hong Kong dollars in contracts on hand. So again, environmental produce a lot of business, good business opportunity. Now, um, I want to talk about a little bit about my um, hotel business. Uh, we built one of the first hotel development projects Opposite Times Square, there's a Holiday Inn Express, and it was extremely well received. We competed in 2005, and we sold the company for quite a handsome profit. But, a big but, at that time, in 2005, we did not have much energy conservation concept. So we did not put any energy and conservation equipment into the hotel. So one of the things that I regret a lot is that we need to spend $5.5 million as an energy bill per year for the hotel, which is quite a lot. And from a business perspective, this is not good because you know, every single dollar it could, be a, it could be a profit. And we sold the hotel. At that time, we sold it at around 3% yield. So if I save $1 million energy bill more, my selling price can easily add up about $13, $14 million. So in any aspect I look at this, you know, green is not a cost, it's an investment. So I, I learned my lesson, and uh, very fortunately, you know, God gave me a second chance. So in uh, around 2012, we have another opportunity to build a second hotel um, in, in Hong Kong, which is Shen Wan Holiday Inn Express. Now this time, I have my, all my engineer together and said, I, I really want to do this as green as possibly can with a reasonable um, amount of cost investment. So we look at the hotel and then we get my engineer together and we decided to lower 58.5% of the energy from the average hotel in Hong Kong. So our target is 181 kilowatt per meter square per year with 80% occupancy. Okay, remember this figure, 181, 80%. Now, at that time, you look at Hong Kong, we are benchmarks 437. US is 400, and my hotel previously in Causeway Bay, it was 460. So when about 181, a lot of my engineers say this is not possible, it cannot be done. Now this, I'm asking for too much. But nevertheless, that was our, our aim. And eventually, we have, uh, uh, have a lot of achievement for this hotel. Uh, arguably, this is probably the world's most green high-rise hotel in, in the world. Now we have a lot of... Um, award and recognitions. You cannot just call yourself green building, okay? That's, that's a standard for green building. So in Hong Kong, it's called Hong Kong Bin Pass, which is actually controlled and promoted by the Hong Kong Green Council. We receive a platinum rating, which is the highest rating. And then the US, they have a similar standard called LEEDS, and we also receive the platinum rating. Singapore, they call it Green Mark, and we also receive the platinum rating. In China, they use a three-star system, and we got the highest ranking also, three-star. And so basically, you know, we have many, many recognitions and, and accomplishments. Now, how do we do it? 
In Hong Kong, when we design the green building, the first thing we have to think about is to block the heat, because we do not want the heat going into the building. Because all the heat, when the heat goes into the building, we need air conditioning to cool it down. So we try to block it. So we use a double glazing um, for the facade, for the curtain wall. And not only that, uh, using inside the curtain wall, we inject some nylon gas. It will block all the heat from outside the sun. So we basically lower the heat transmission. And then what we do, uh, we look at the building inside. Most people will put the key card into the key holder. And then what we did is a very little device. We link up the key card with the curtain. So when we put the card in, the curtain will automatically open for you. But at night time, about 8 o'clock, they will automatically close for you. Now if you take the card, key card out, you auto also automatically close for you. Now why is that important? Because when you have this curtain there, you have additional protection from the heat again. Because the heat cannot get inside the, the room too much. And at night time, you block the light. So we will minimize the light pollution to the nearby environments. Also, we have a lot of uh, LED lighting and also um, T5 tubes for the back of house area. Now, this is, this is something my, my favorite. This is what we call a Peltier headboard. Uh, we're using what we call a localized cooling concept because when you imagine yourself lying down on, on a bed, you have the blanket on top of yourself, right? So basically, you want to cool your head. You don't want to cool your body. So you, if you can find a way to just cool your head, then you still feel comfortable. So, so this system is providing a soft air. Uh, the air is around traveling through 0 0.3 minutes per second. So very soft air, but three degree colder to, your, to cool down your head. And this system will kick on only after one hour you switch your lighting. And then I will disable your thermostat. So no matter you, how much temperature you, you put in, I will disable that and give you around 25 degree cooling, okay? But at the same time, I cool down your head, so you feel very comfortable. In the next day morning, 7 o'clock, I will switch it back again. So you go back to your original setting of a thermostat. Nobody has done this before, this is our invention. So the hotel management, the Intercontinental Group, are very skeptical about this. They say, no, what, what, what this really is, does it really work, it's going to you know, upset my future guests. I got a lot of complaint. So they are only allow me to put in two rooms. And I can show you, since the hotel operation, no one complains. And not only that, no one really noticed the system exists. So many developers and many more construction friends heard about this story. Some don't believe me. So they actually booked the room and tried it themselves. And they found it very comfortable. Because when you have a soft air flowing through you, you're actually sipping better. So what I mean is, when you're designing something good for the environment. It can also be healthy. So you do not have to sacrifice your comfort and healthy in terms of green. If you have a good design, you can achieve all that. And, and something that else we do, we have CCTV. I'm sure now we have, for security reasons, we have a, installed a CCTV around the building. And for the corridor and some of the conference room, now we install a software we call Press. It's the pattern recognition it's the AI software. It basically recognizes um, the body shape. So when you see a human there with a body shape, then you will turn on the air conditioning unit and turn on the lighting. And nobody there to turn to the minimum. And then we install one of the largest um, solar hot water collection system uh, in Hong Kong. This is a copper tube inside a vacuum. So the sunlight will go inside, heat up the water, and then the water will transport back the tanker to store it. And also we have a, what we call heat pump. What heat pump is, energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? So when you are creating cool air for the hotel, there's some waste heat will be generated. So we are capturing that heat back into the system to hot heat up the water. So with this solar panel and this heat pump together, we do not need to boil any water at all for the whole, entire hotel throughout the year. 99.9% .9 we don't need to, ex except from very cold weather. And then we use this, uh, what we call iFan coil, intelligent fan coil. So basically the air conditioning system works like this. You have a chiller on the roof, the building. Um, they will produce uh, um, cold water, about 70 degrees Celsius. And then the pump will pump the cool air 
into this auditorium roof, and then you blow some air through the pipe, and then you generate cool air for us. Now, this blowing fan is called fan coil part. And this fan coil is actually quite energy cons consuming. So we use a technology called permanent magnet motor to reduce energy consumption. And sometimes you, know, you can reduce up to around 40 to 80 percent, depends on the speed. And not only that, the motor itself, when it becomes more efficient, there will be a little, little heat on the surface. So we do not need extra cool air to cool down the heat of the motor as well. So it's actually double, double benefit. And it actually produce much less noise, because when the system is more efficient, the waste heat, waste noise are, are less. Now this is my, uh, again, one of my personal favorites. Um, we engaged a professor from Polytechnic University. I encountered him at one of the conference, and he has some beautiful algorithm to control the air conditioning units so that it can lower the energy, but provide the same comfort. So I engaged him, and we spent nearly two years to turn his algorithm uh, into a, a product, and then we use it in the hotel. So basically, uh, this hotel, we're monitoring this, the hotel situation for after 15 minutes. So we measure the outside temperature, the outside humidity, and the cooling load required from the, from the building. And then the professor's algorithm will kick in to control um, the cooling tower, uh, the chiller, and then the water pump. So that we actually uh, provide the same comfort, but lower energy consumptions. Now, we, we tested the system, put it on and off, on and off. You actually save around 27% of the energy of the air conditioning system, which is quite a lot. Now, um, but the system itself is not expensive at all, actually quite economical. The initial investment is less than half a million Hong Kong dollars, and payback is less than 1.4 years. So actually it's very, very doable. Okay? So if you would put this money uh, into you know, the bank, and at the moment you get about silver and something percentage of interest. Even you go into any, um, any stock, most of the stocks in Hong Kong provide you maybe a 5 6% yield, are very good already, but we'll provide you something like 16% yield, which is very, very uh, lucrative. Uh, not only that, we actually have to monitor the hotel. So we have a, a very comprehensive system built in uh, online, so we can monitor all the hotel energy consumption, water consumption, uh, so, so we can log in and monitor the equipment, and I know exactly how much they spend on energy in uh, throughout the year, from January to, to December, and I can, I can see all that. And why it's important? Because when you are actually um, have all these uh, very uh, figures on the hand, and you can put this on the, on the screen. This is one of the um, qualifiers in, in my 39 form. Remember, I should not use any boiler at all. This is actually the boiler figures. Now immediately you see something, that's, this is not right, this is wrong. It's, the boy is turning on and off, on and off. Apparently, we find out later on, it's only the connection was not made properly. So after we make the connection properly, it became like this. It's what it's supposed to be, not function at all. Now, so, so have a data transparency is very critical to monitor the system and make improvement. Now, um, again, remember, I, I asked you to remember this figure uh, carefully, 181 kilowatt hour per meter square per year with 80% occupancy. Now this is, this is very new, is this because this is a just last year figure. We managed to cut down the energy consumption in the hotel first year operation to 225, down to 188. A little bit higher than 181, but our hotel occupation last year was very good. We have achieved 92.5%. So basically, I did a calculation, we're a little bit better than we first estimated. So basically, we achieved the target. Now, how that put into an international perspective? In Singapore, they have a, a similar benchmark. The top-ranking hotel, they are talking about 232 to 292. So I am 188 means I'm 20% better than the best performance hotel in Singapore. Now, I'm turning all this technology into a business. Now, since the hotel operated in 2013, at the same time, we also started a new company called uh, REC Green Technologies Company to start selling these technologies into the market. For example, this fan coil unit I mentioned to you about, many hotels are actually using my, my products. Uh, we sold over 4,000 units. 
and estimated every year our carbon emission is lower than a thousand tons and we sold over 10 million Hong Kong dollars of a product. So this is just some of the clients that, that we, we have been doing business with. And now we only, we're only moving forward. So nowadays we all talk about um, IoT, uh, Internet of Things. So now I can use a system using Wi-Fi to control the fan card. So you're basically using your smartphone, you install software, you can control the fan card unit. And we also uh, have many um, company learn about my company many new ventures, uh, so they want to have the product to be distributed through us. So this is an, a, a project that we actually embarked on two or three years ago. It's not our own technology, it's another company technology, but we actually license it from them. It's basically, it's a Nino, Nino Flex. Um, this is a refractor. When you go to any office upstairs, you have a lot of refractor, and those are, are not high-tech. Those are, are very traditional. The light refraction is probably about 80%. Now with this um, nanofrax technology, we can refract over 95% of light. So what does it mean? It means when you're doing a new building, a new design, you can use less light. Okay, even though the, the, this refractor is a little bit more expensive, but you can end up saving 30 or 40% of the lighting energy in the office area. Now, the energy uh, optimization solution that we just talked about, uh, we also uh, selling this to other, other projects as well. Uh, our first outside customer is actually the Civil Asian Department in China Cork. They have to use our system and managed to save something like 15% in their energies in the uh, HUAV system, which means something like close to 4.6% of the entire building energy, which is quite a lot. Now, if you are familiar with this um, uh, Hong Kong energy roadmap published by the environmental uh, department, they are saying Hong Kong in the next five years' time have to save 5% of the energy, or the government project, or the government buildings. Now, CAD, just install my software. Just save 4.5% already. So they're really reaching a target. And we also did uh, some, um, together some of the clinics for the hospital authority. And the monitoring project power box I mentioned about, uh, we are sending this to a DSD, a uh, drainage department. So they're monitoring the pump station. So all this technology we developed, now using to a lot of um, different government departments nowadays. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, um, this is another project that we did. The PV panel um, situated in Shepik uh, Reservoir. Because the government has planned that in the future they want to have all the entire water department to be energy neutral. So they're testing this system in the Hong Kong Reservoir there. The beauty of this is, uh, when you are putting PV panel on top of the reservoir, not only that you provide, generate electricity, but you also lower the water evaporations. So the water we are saving also the water as well. And because it's captured the sun, sunlight, so you, you will slow down the algae development uh, underneath the reservoir. So the fish can actually grow more healthier in this region. So basically, one stone and kill three birds. So at the moment, the results are very promising. And also, the whole system being monitored by our power box system. Um, the last piece of um, business I want to mention about is um, we met a professor in City University and uh, he told me he has this new technology that uh, he developed that can capture the burning of this uh, Joyce paper. We imagine all this pollution will go off into the air. So he said, Conrad, you know, why don't you license this and, and really make it into a, a product? So I, I did. So basically we're using his technology to capture all this dust and ash from this um, um, paper burning. Uh, and again, we make this a quite successful product. We sold it to many of the hospital and cemeteries. And then uh, Wang Daixin heard about our, our story and said, you know, Conrad, we, we have a problem. Because all this incident, where every time it burns, it generates a lot of you know, smokes, and it's not very healthy. Okay, can you do something about it? I said, okay, we did the design. So we, this, again, becoming a new product of ours. And this is, I believe, from, as far as I know, it's the first product that actually can capture all this dust from this incident. Because it's actually very difficult to do because they have a little oil there. So how to treat the oil is actually quite, quite messy. Recently, I'm sure you from the news, you know that all these Guat Fui Am Chang, they need to have a license. So, so my, my, that company, the, the phone could be keep ringing for the last couple of months. Because all these Guat Fui Am Chang, they want to have this system to ensure that they can, they can get a license because the EDP would not give, you, give them a license without all this treatment. So probably we're going to sell about even 20, even 30 units this year. 
So the business will be going um, exponentially. So this um, company alone last year we do something like um, 33 million dollars. It's just a very young company, and of course, from a, our group's perspective, we do about six billion dollar a year. It's still a very small fraction, but it's growing very fast and is a, a huge potential. And also, you know, it's actually very good for the company publicity, our reputation, because we saw that uh, we actually care about the environment. So, with all that, now green is it a problem or is it an opportunity? It's like the ancient questions. When you look at a glass, is it half empty or half full? When I look at glass, it's half empty. It also means that there's still 100% business opportunity that I can get. I can fill up the glass. So that is my business opportunity. Now, I um, just want to share with you from, my, from my, all my experience, there are two kinds of people in the world and see which kind you are. The first one, identify a problem, and then think the problem is partly my responsibility. I, I'm partly responsible for that. And then why don't I create a solution to solve the problem? And then build a team of people who have the same mission, capability, put it all together, and implement this. And I call this a leader. Now, the other type of person, identify a problem, and then the first thing they think about is, no, 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 no not, not my issue. And look at who should I blame. Oh, I find someone that I can blame. And then mobilize the media to attack them. What do we call this? Politician. Now, joking that aside, you want to become an entrepreneur, especially a green entrepreneur. You must start from a problem or from a market perspective. A problem you identify, it means that there's a commercial needs for that particular solution or product or service. And then you create a cost-effective solution to meet that problem, to solve that problem. That could be a new technology, or a new service, or a new product, or a new way of delivery. And then you build a team who will share your vision. And then you try to capture the market. And in order to do that, you can create a greener world for all of us. Because you are all very young, or you are about to graduate, and you have a very bright future ahead of you. But how do you turn your future into a greener future? Which I think we should all share, because we only have one Earth, and there are a lot of things that we should do in order for you, for you and your children to survive in the future. And the choice is yours. So thank you very much.